Merry Christmas Eve, everyone. Merry Christmas Eve. One more sleep till Christmas. Does anybody else watch the Muppet Christmas Carol? Where they sing the song, after all, there's only one more sleep till Christmas. It's one of our favorite things. So we're going to do things a little different. Uh, this uh, evening, we're going to have um, our Advent candle lighting. Uh, let me say an opening prayer, and then we'll get started with our festivity, shall we? So let's pray together. Well, happy birthday, Jesus. Um, we don't actually know the day or the time when you arrived, but the early church chose December 25th, uh, just after the winter solstice. Now the days are, are, are getting longer again. We've, we've uh, broken through the, the, the deepest part of night, and now morning is on its way. And what an appropriate thing to celebrate your arrival, the arrival of the light of the world coming to humankind in the flesh of a baby. And so, Lord, we pray that we would remember your coming and why you came as we celebrate this Christmas Eve, as we celebrate the end of Advent and the beginning of Christmas. We pray that you would be with us this evening in Jesus' name. The season for watching and waiting is over. The people who walked in darkness have seen great light. This is the light of the world, and the darkness cannot extinguish it. I'm just going to ask, what's your pleasure? Do you want to stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down? Or do you want to stay seated the whole time? I'm fine either way. Seated it is. All right. Well, in that case, I'll take my seat. And let's sing together hymn number 100, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Our first reading for this evening is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on until forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And now we're going to sing hymn number 148, We Three Kings of Orient Are. We've got five verses in this. So everybody will sing verses 1 and 2. Ladies will have you sing verse 3. Guys will sing verse 4. And then everybody will join in on verse 5. Okay? 1, 2, and 5 for everybody. Here we go. Still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star.
second reading this evening is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And now we will sing Joy to the World, number 107. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare in room. Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. Our third reading will be in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And there was, were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Now we will be singing number 123, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Yeah. 
And then our final reading is from Luke 2, 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone on to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Well, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off. They found Mary, Joseph, and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary pondered all these things in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And now let's sing O Holy Night, number 113. Yes. 
devotion tonight, instead of me writing a sermon exactly, I've been inspired this season by the, the writings of a particular hymn that was written a long, long time ago, 16-something or other, 1656 I think it was, by a German guy named Paul Gerhardt. And he wrote this great Christmas hymn called, All My Heart This Night Rejoices. And so I'm going to sing a verse, and then these guys are going to comment on the verse, and we're just going to kind of go back and forth. All my heart this night rejoices as I hear far and near sweetest angel voices Christ is born their choirs are singing till the air everywhere now with joy is ringing It's finally here Christmas time in just a few hours the day will arrive when we recognize the arrival of God made flesh among us. No wonder the angels sang. No surprise, the air rings with glory and joyous song. Hear the conqueror has spoken. Now the foe, sin and woe, death and hell are broken. God is man, man to deliver. And the sun now is one with our blood forever. To some, it might seem odd to think of God the Conqueror at a time like this, this still small night. But God uses small circumstances to address big problems. The birth of a babe in little Bethlehem to break the bonds of sin and death, all to deliver us to the Father by the obedience of the Son. Should we fear our God's displeasure, who to save freely gave his most precious treasure? To redeem us he has given his own Son from the throne of his might in heaven. God is not angered. The Lord has not sent the Son out of frustration with the fallenness of humanity. No. Now is Noel proclaimed. The birth, the birth, the Son has arrived to set us free to gain the heights of heaven. See the Lamb our sin once taking to the cross suffering loss full atonement making 
For our life is all he tenders, and his grace all our race fit for glory renders. Why would we sing of the cross on Christmas Eve? Because even we understand Christmas to be a time of gifts and God's gift of grace for you and me. There is no better gift than that which brings us to life itself and makes us fit for eternity. Softly from his lowly manger, Jesus calls one and all, you are safe from danger. We shall live with him forever. You are freed, all you need, I will surely give you. The baby cries, and we still hear the echoes. Not of pain or discomfort, but cries of calling, of coming near. Jesus came to give the greatest gift, himself, as the answer for every promise the Father has made to our fallen state. Come then, banish all your sadness, one and all, great and small, come with songs of gladness. We shall live with him forever, there on high in that joy which will vanish never. And so it's finally here. Christmas, where all the world can join the song in longing for peace on earth. Grasping at goodwill to all, anyone can hear and receive the good news. God's Christmas gift is Jesus himself, born to grow and live, learn and teach, die and rise again. This is why we celebrate new life, freely given, come from heaven so we can return with Christ. And now we have a congregational response. This is printed on the inside page of your bulletin. And so our goal is to respond to this wonderful love that God has given and shown us in the birth of Jesus himself. And so let's read the congregational response together. O oh Lord Christ, born into our world this day, bring joy to our hearts that we would make room for your grace. Place your song on our lips that we would proclaim good news for all to hear. Give clear vision to our eyes that we would see your blessings flow all around us. Create peace among all nations that we would dwell in harmony as brothers and sisters. Grant hope to our souls that we would experience your kingdom in our lives. We receive you now, who comes to us as purest love in awe and wonder. Amen. As the light is going to come to you, I'm going to ask that you would hold your candles straight up. Uh, so that way we minimize any drippage that might happen. And then we'll also sing Silent Night, Holy Night, number 100. Silent Night, Holy Night, all is calm.
Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus Lord at thy birth. Lord God, you have given so much to us. Yes, the people in this building. Yes, the people in this community. But humanity as a whole, we were lost in the dark. And then suddenly, the light of God became known. Born to us in a baby and then walked among us as a young man, as a rabbi and a teacher and then a sacrifice. But not a sacrifice that was just poured out and then stay dead. No, no, no. Jesus, you only borrowed that grave for three days and then rose again. We're looking forward to celebrating that on Easter. But for now, we remember how you came, how much a gift you are to us all. And so as we enter into our Christmas season, Lord, we pray that that the time we share with our families and loved ones and friends, exchanging gifts and encouraging one another, that we'd remember that you are the in the midst of it all. We ask for your help remembering this in your name, Jesus. Amen.